Imagine a life without apples and oranges and cherries and pears. And that is what we would have without pollinators. And in this world of commercial farms and all of the chemicals that commercial farms are using, that is what we're, where we are headed. And in my opinion, if we have a lot of uh, smaller, more self-sustainable farms, then um, we can really work with the pollinators and use a lot less chemicals. So I have, uh, that's what my speech is going to be about today. And one of the things that I have worked, um, one of the resources I have used is the Natural, Natural Resources Defense Council. And it talks about the vanishing bees, which I think is a, is a huge problem. And one of the concerns is that with com commercial farms is that there are um, a lot of one crop or a lot of, uh, say, just beef, you know, growing in one area or uh, pork growing in one area. And so the pollinators have a long ways to grow to go or, and or grow before they are effective and so that is one of the things that is affecting them. So we're having the pollinators be affected and also um, the chemicals are affecting the soil and the fish in our, our rivers and obviously that is not a good thing as well. And so um, again the point is is that if we take away from the, the larger commercial farms and we all do our, our part and um, do a little bit and each do, for instance, you know, I, I did a video and we raised turkeys and if each person can do, not for instance, not everybody can raise turkeys, but the next farm over may be able to um, do a hive of honeybees and then the next place over could possibly raise um, pigs and then the next place over could do a really great garden and then that gives again the pollinators and um, the soil time to recover and the bees can travel from place to place and everything has time to recover and it's a lot more sustainable and so that's kind of what I'm trying to teach and what my goal would be for the long term is not the big um, commercial farms but a lot more uh, small sustainable farms and for every person to be doing their part and there's um, a lot of magazines this is another resource that I've used that um, people can use it's uh, the Mother Earth News and um, you know, this even just the subtitle was "Learn to Be Self-Sufficient," and you know, so this is is a great article um, just for any person to understand. And then, of course, there's always um, article or books on how to grow organically. And so, obviously, everybody can do things to just take a, a small step to be self-sufficient. So. That's what I think that we could do to make sure and keep the future of apples and oranges and uh, the soil and the fish and fauna. So thanks a lot. Do you guys have any questions on how to be self-sustainable? How are the bees pollinating? You, what are they pollinating on at the pork farm <coughs> down the street? You said they're rotating around, so... Well, it's not necessarily that they're pollinating at each individual farm, but it helps that they're um, having less places, uh, further, less distance to travel. Instead of having such huge farms, then they've got, you know, small farms here, and then, you know, each garden, each place has a garden here, and, you know, so it's less distance for the bees to travel is one of the theories of colony collapse disease. Okay. Anybody else? Thanks so much for being part of my speech. Good job, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, look at me. Good question, husband. <laughs>